Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff uh, mentioned that a uh, few, about over a year and a half ago now, uh, he got a message from DSA that was us calling him saying, hey, how do we do this? You know, I, 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 don't have any, I don't have any idea. And he came and he brought a binder with him of research that he had done and, and scoured the internet, came back. We gave him a whole list of questions he hits up, up in a couple more months saying, hey, I got more for you. So, hard working guy, absolutely love him. Thank you so much for your support. One other thing he told me when he came back to us, he said, hey, I mentioned this to Yusuf, and he couldn't wait to get involved. He said, please, please. <laughs> Let, the, let me come in and talk to them. And I gotta say, Yusuf has probably been one of the most outspoken and energetic supporters of this campaign yet. I live and breathe this stuff and I can't uh, believe the energy he has for it. Absolutely appreciate him every single day that I'm doing this. An absolute asset to our community and I can't wait to hear him speak. So without further ado, much, Greg, and another round of applause for Sean and Jeff for those fantastic for all of you for being here today with us. And I do distinctly remember, actually I think it was probably even before you guys had that meeting, Jeff and I had a town hall on solar at uh, Tappan Middle School. And it was at that town hall that I remember him and I were both starting to talk about municipal power and the need for us to move towards municipal energy because of all of the things that DT has done right. to push down our ability to move towards a sustainable future in our community. So, so it's not, you know, yes, we need to be fighting for public power. Yes, we need to be fighting for public accountability for our power system. But let me just tell you about some of the day-to-day -day things that I get to face as your state legislator in Lansing really quickly before I get into the public power issue. DTE has, an, has a corrupting influence on our political process in Lansing, period. What we have seen with the amount of money that they have spent on political campaigns, but more importantly, the amount of corporate dollars that they have dumped into dark money accounts to fund for and against campaigns, it has been, it has silenced the voices of legislators, it has changed the climate in Lansing, they are fighting tooth and nail against our ability to put solar on our own homes in Ann Arbor, in Traverse City, and all across this state. They are fighting to make sure that we don't have that ability anymore, that we aren't able to generate our own power on our homes. That's what DTE is doing. That's what DTE is spending their money on, uh, our money on, excuse me, because they're taking our ratepayer dollars and they're putting it towards these campaigns. I believe it was $48 million in 2018 that they spent on these dark money accounts to, to fund campaigns for and against candidates. Just like Sean was just saying, these ads that run, and just a quick side note, when you're driving down the highway and you see a, a billboard and it's you know a, 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 maybe a black and white picture of a politician that just woke up and their hair is all disheveled and red letters say, this person's terrible, you should call them and tell them how terrible they are. That's what, they, that's what they use this money for, this corporate money, our money that we pay to DTE, that they then take that money, turn it around, and $48 million goes into ads like that to fight against politicians that call them out. Okay? That's what we have day in and day out in Lansing. That's the atmosphere that they've created by their money. We have a corrupt system that is allowing for corporations like DTE, and it's not just DTE, corporations like DTE to have this type of influence in the process. And so when people ask me, well, isn't DTE a publicly regulated utility, a private corporation that's a publicly regulated utility? Isn't there the MPSC that gets to decide and make rules about what they can and cannot do? I just point people to the reality of the situation, which is that we the people have no control over DTE. We the people have no control over these publicly regulated utilities because the reality is in the money. The reality is in the money that's spent in elections. And the reality is in the money that is, that is the real crux of this argument, which is their profits. Their profits are the bottom line of everything that drives their decision making as a corporation, both DTE and consumers. Between the two of them, in 2020, 
they made out with $2 billion in profits. $2 billion of our money that they didn't spend on wires, they didn't spend on circuit breakers, they didn't even spend it on tree cutting. They spent it on sending checks to their shareholders on Wall Street, our money. That's why the idea of a municipal utility is so powerful for us, the people, and so scary for them. Because that $2 billion must be invested in us, in our infrastructure. Every time we have a power outage, it's not just an inconvenience. I want to remind us of that. There are people in our community, we may not see them every day, but when the power goes out, they lose their insulin. When the power goes out and they don't have air conditioning, for senior citizens, that's a problem. There are people whose health depends on our power. So when the power goes out for two and three days, when the power goes out for a week, people are facing dire situations and they're walking away with $2 billion. That is unacceptable. And so what we're doing here today is powerful because what we're doing is envisioning a better future for our community. And just as a side note, I've had people approach me from other parts of this county too, from, from the east side, from Ypsilanti and Ypsilanti Township, and they've said, hey, we want in. We want to be part of that too. We're sick of DTE. We're sick of the power outages. We want to be part of this too. It shouldn't just be Ann Arbor. It should be our whole community, Washtenaw County, working on this together. But we can lead the way here in Ann Arbor. We can lead the way and, and start the path for something new. When we have public power, the data shows us that we will have less power outages. The data shows us that our power will get restored faster because of what Sean was just telling us. If they don't, they will hear from us. There will be problems. If they don't, we, they will lose elections. If they don't, we hold them accountable. We hold them accountable. So what if DTE doesn't restore our power? We still have to be their customers. We don't have a choice. We do not have a choice. We have to be their customers. They still get to walk away with our money. If we have a public utility, the data shows we pay lower rates. Compare what we're paying now to what Sean is paying in Lansing. We pay lower rates. When we have public power, anything that's made above and beyond, any profits, are reinvested in the grid to make sure that our power is safe, it's reliable, and it's clean. The other thing that we get is a utility that's not going to spend our money fighting against clean power in Lansing. Look what Lansing Board of Water and Light is doing for solar energy right now. They just tweeted recently about solar energy in their community. They have incentive programs, $2,000 per person to put solar panels on your roof in Lansing right now, today. $2,000 per person, up to $2,000 credit. We can have that in Ann Arbor. The contrast, of course, with that is DTE's lobbying effort to block the bill that I've co-sponsored that is actually a Republican bill. I drafted it back in 2017, and we let a Republican introduce it because we thought it might have a better chance of passing. DTE is fighting it tooth and nail. Every lobbyist, every dollar, every ounce of their fiber is going opposed to a bill that would lift the cap. The cap that we have, 1% of all of our energy in the DTE service area, no more than 1% can be from distributed generation, from solar panels on people's roofs. We want that cap gone. We want that cap gone now because we are at that cap. And right now, solar installers are, are, be, are not able to install at the rate that they have before. Our transition to renewable energy needs to happen fast. They're fighting that every day in Lansing. They have made sure that it doesn't get even a committee vote. I see this every day, front, you know, front row seat. I'm in the splash zone. These people are, are in the halls of power right now making sure that that doesn't pass. Contrast with Lansing Board of Water and Light and what they're doing. We have this moment, we have a moral obligation, a moral obligation to get rid of these antiquated, for-profit power utilities 
that are bankrupting us, that are causing us health issues, that are putting us in a place where we will not be able to live on this planet for, for another several decades. We are in dire straits. Look at the, the, the crises, like Greg was saying, all across our country, all across the planet. Our planet is burning, literally. And they are still burning coal and fossil fuels. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. We can do better. Right here in Ann Arbor, when we take our power back, the most important thing I told you about, the more reliable, the less power outages, the lower rates, those are all great. But to me, the most important thing is that we put our foot down that is 100% renewable energy here in the city of Ann Arbor from now into the future. 100% renewable energy. We cannot wait any longer. We cannot wait any longer. 100% renewable energy. And by the way, I introduced that bill in Lansing to create a 100% renewable energy portfolio to force the private utilities like DTN consumers to go to 100%. Guess what they did? They didn't like it. They fought against it. They spent our money fighting against that bill. When we take our power back, we can do that right here in Ann Arbor. We can make renewable energy a reality. And just as a, again, statistic, Lansing Board of Water and Light is double DTE's renewable energy portfolio. Yes, they could do better, but they're already double what we have here in, in Ann Arbor and Washtenaw County. And by the way, don't be fooled by the Green Currents program. It's bullshit. And what they're doing is making you pay for a program that they already have to do. They already have to meet 15% renewable energy and they're making you pay for it. So we, the people, must take our power back. Our power. This is not DTE's power. These are not DTE's profits. These are our hard-earned dollars that belong in our pockets and belong to keeping our lights on. It's our power, it's our future, and we can take it back right here. Thank you all for being here today. It's so good to see you. Let's do this. We can do it together. Thank you so much, Yusuf Rabi. You are absolutely right. It is our dollars, it is our future, it is our city, and we need to take back the control. We need to take it to DTE. It is, t it is too late for nice words and begging and hoping and pleading that they'll do the right thing. Someday you have to stand up and fight, and municipalization is a shot across their face, and they deserve it. So please, please, thank you all for coming. Please hang out for longer, have some more tacos, talk to one another. And when you go home, send an email to your city council person, give them a call, tell them, I support public power and I want you to. Follow us on social media, follow us on Facebook, follow our email list, email us at Ann Arbor gmail.com if you want to get involved with the organizing. We need every bit of help we can get. This is a long fight. This is a hard fight, but this is a fight we can win, and this is a fight we must win.